Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight, all of you that are online already. Welcome, a very warm good evening to all of you on this beautiful Tuesday evening, the 16th of March 2021. Welcome to tonight's program. We pray, we pray that you are going to be blessed, that you will learn, that you will grow. And so before we open in prayer and as we worshiping, I want you to share the program, every one of you that's online. Firstly, hit the like button. Number two, hit the share button. And just share this program. At the bottom right hand side of your... Hit that share button and let it go out. And you never know who the Lord is going to be speaking to through your share. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Well, a very warm good evening to all of you and everyone that has just joined online. We are so grateful that you can be with us today as we will spend some time in praying, in worshipping, but also we're going to listen to the Word of God tonight. So every one of you that are online, I want you to do something. Say, hashtag prayer. Hashtag prayer. I want you to do that and let me see all of you that are watching and uh, have you shared tonight's program? If you have going to be speaking to tonight through your share. And so tonight, before we commence, I'm going to ask Jeffrey Naidu to open this evening's service in prayer. Let us pray, Jeff. Amen. Let's just bow our heads at this time. Our most gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and call you to join the privilege this evening to come and give you glory. Father, we thank you right now for everybody that's watching in their homes or even they're watching online yes. tonight. We ask yes. you, Lord, for your Holy yes. Spirit to come and touch every single one of your children today. Father, we thank you today that we are desperate to get a piece of heaven tonight. And we know God right in this place, right in your children's home, they will feel the mighty outpouring of your spirit, Lord. We pray tonight that you'll give us fresh, fresh manna from above. You'll give us fresh, fresh fire, Father. So if you're going to burn within ourselves, you'll allow us yes, to burn tonight, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. So yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. tonight. I pray right now, whatever your children are desirous from you, Lord. Whatever they trust in you, Lord, tonight I pray. You see them at this time, Father, I pray. Even, Lord, you come tonight, Father. We, you don't owe us anything, Lord, tonight. We just count your blessings. We name them one by one. And we thank you, Lord, for what you have done in our lives. We pray tonight, Father, for the worship. We pray for your servant, Lord, who bring forth your word. Let your anointing fill your children tonight, Lord. Give us an open heaven and write our praise to the Lord. Fill us up tonight, Lord, we pray. Fill us with your mighty Holy Spirit. Oh, set us a place, Father. Set us on fire for you tonight, my Lord. Oh, you let me feel your power and anointing, Jesus. Come and fill our homes, fill our lives, fill our children yes, tonight, Lord. Oh, that we may not be in Fill us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, with much thanksgiving. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Before we get into some worship, I want you to hashtag prayer. Hashtag prayer tonight. And Rani Ganesh, I see you online. Thank you. Geeta Alexander, David Chetty, Priscilla Naya, Tracy Chetty, Dan Narayana, thank you. Chantel Naidu, Shirley Frank, Rhoda Munsami, thank you. All of you that have hashtag prayer. Gloria Naidu, Auntie Priscilla Powell, Diana Kisten, good to have you online and well and strong, Diana. And then we have Tilly Mudley. Good to have you online. And Cyril's well. He's strong. He's out of hospital. God is good. Madeleine Davidson. Thank you for being online. Hashtag prayer. Vino Mudley. Priscilla Henry. Priscilla, welcome online. Ghana Marimutu. Thank you for being online. Craig Naidu. Craig and Chantel Naidu. Thank you for being online. And all of you, the rest of you that are still coming on. Thank you. Hit the share button and let share tonight's program tonight we are expecting for the lord our god he's right there in your midst and your homes and before we get into whatever songs you've already prepared thank you levarden hashtag prayer late thank you but at least you're online thank you i know you're moving house and then cindy governor thank you for joining us and being online. Thank you to uh, Vaneshri uh, Naika for being online. It's good to have you. Alan Govan Sami, a warm welcome to you as well. Pastor Bobby Perumal, thank you for being online. Bless you too. Chantal Pele, thank you. Leanne Ailu, thank you for being online. Thank you, Segi Governor. you also online. It's good to see so many of you online tonight. Navan Naidu, your daughter celebrated her birthday yesterday. A very happy birthday to her, every one of you. And now tonight, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within. Bless His holy name. Welcome Rishad. Welcome Jane Gavinder. Welcome Lorna Rashid. Welcome Joy Rubin. Welcome Chris Andrew. 
Good to have you online tonight. That is within me, bless the lowly name. One more time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Welcome Neil Pakrisami, welcome Carlo Gordon, welcome, welcome all of you. Great thing, say, He has done worship. Let's worship in our homes. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Bless. God answers prayer. God answers. Welcome, welcome, Jesse. Ready? Welcome, welcome to the program tonight. Welcome, Michaela Rampasad. It's good to have you online with us tonight. Are you expectant, everybody? Are you expectant tonight? I want you to remain in the spirit for the Lord is moving. Good to me bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name Welcome, welcome Uncle Sunny Nandu, welcome oh. online, welcome Kevin Chetty, all the way from the South Coast, Pastor Kevin yes. Chetty, it's good to have you online with us, welcome also to Auntie Daisy Jacob, it's good to have you online to us, we have some powerful prayer warriors online tonight, uh, and I'm going to be ministering a word, and I want you to catch this word, for I know that the Lord is at work, even in this pandemic, uh, Oh, yes, that's right, Pastor Kevin. God is good. Hallelujah. So good. God is so Worship, lead the worship, lead the worship. Welcome, Sam Play. Welcome, welcome. I hope that your hospital visit all went well. God is at work. God is at work and is healing you, Sam. I know that right now, for God is doing an internal work in your life. Hallelujah. Welcome to God Power Victory. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you online, man of God. Thank you for being online tonight. Your glory, that is what I want to long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome, come flood this place and fill the earth. Glory, God is what our heart longs for. Ooh. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have some pastors that are online. Welcome, Pastor Victory. It's good to have you. It's good to have you online with us tonight. Uh, Pastor Kevin Chetty from the South Coast. Uh, good to have you. And one of the days your team has to come. 
and minister in dance here at the church. Welcome, welcome, every one of you. Alan Govan Sami, welcome, welcome. Get ready for what the Lord is going to do tonight. Worship, worship, Hayden. Everybody worship the Lord. Set the atmosphere in your home. The Lord inhabits the praises of His people. He's inhabiting your praises right, now, right there where you are in your home. Open up your mouth and worship Him. He is right there with you tonight. Whoa, whoa.
Kunda Risha Toro Lobondo Riaralaba Kiriere Lebendo Shandoro Loboboyata Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you this evening for this time that we can just come and worship and praise you. We come before you, Father, today and we remove every mask. We come before you just as we are because we are hungry. We are passionate and we are zealous for the things of God. And Lord, today we pray that you will teach us. Holy Spirit, just ignite on the inside of us the fire that needs to burn. Ignite that fire tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You got one more song that you want to do before I minister? Okay, go ahead. I can feel there's one more song. Well, for those of you that have just joined, Santra Naidu, welcome. Thank you for being online. Priscilla Naya, that's absolutely right. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We welcome you. Welcome you. Welcome to Monique Sneiman. Welcome on, online today. Welcome to the program. Stay, stay connected for the word of the Lord is about to be ministered and get your breakthrough tonight. Let's worship. I'm trading my sorrows and I'm trading my shame I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord so I'm trading my sickness and I'm trading my sickness and I'm trading my shame I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. And I'm trading my sickness, and I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for joy of the Lord. Sing yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, Come on, everyone yes, at home, Lord, sing yes, with us. Lord, yes, yes, Lord, There's power yes, in agreement. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, For when you Lord, agree, two or three agree anything in His name, yes, it is done. Yes, Lord, whoa, yes, Lord, whoa. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, welcome, welcome, yes, welcome, Lord, welcome, everybody that's yes, online. Lord, yes, amen, Lord, amen, yes, Mr. Yes, Governor. Lord, amen, Tilly Moodley. Amen, amen. Yes, Leon Ailu, amen, that's right. Agree, everyone that agrees. There's power in agreement. And the enemy can never come up against children of God that stand in agreement. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Monique Sneiman. High five to you too. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You I live for every day. That's right, Joy. High five to you and Manny. High five, Joy, and high five, Manny. Hallelujah, Denise Governor. Welcome tonight. You right. Amen. Welcome to Mera Chetty. It's good to see you online. That's right, Jane. The fire of God is falling tonight as our prayer becomes effective. 
and fervent according to the word of God. Holy Spirit, move in the home of every viewer. That's right, Pastor Kevin. Let the Holy Spirit move. Shakoriere lebendo. Shakoriere lebebebeyete. Yendoro lobondoriere la ba 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 yate. Keriere lebebebeyakashata. Yandoro lobobobondoriere lebebebeyete. Keshokoro loboboyata. Welcome, Caleb. Pray, 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 pray. Come on, pray, worship, worship. Hallelujah. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. Thank you, Lord. Play, 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 play. Kuriera la bando, doriera la baya kashata. Shede de 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 riere le be 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 yete. Welcome, Hemeline. Good to have you online, Hemeline. Pastor Victory, we're gonna have you. You must pray, 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 Pastor Victory. You out in Johannesburg. We remember you and your church in prayer. For the Lord is good and His mercies endureth forever. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's you I live for every day. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, everybody that's online, I want you to say hashtag praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, everyone. Hashtag praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys. Bless you, Jeffrey, Hayden, and Nathan for being here tonight. Well, I greet you all this evening, and I'm so excited, and I'm so just revved up and ready. But let me say, I can sense the presence of God right here. And guess what? I am so in waiting. If you, if you are in my shoes right now, you, and if you feel what I'm feeling, I am so expectant for the day when we come back into the church building. And like I said on Sunday past, good news, we've already shared that. On Good Friday, we will be back in the building. Hallelujah. And that's three services on Friday, Good Friday, 7 a.m., 9 a.m., and 11 a.m. You've got to register. Registration's not open yet. We're going to be sending it out on all the social media platforms. And so you've got to be quick to register. Remember, we can only take a certain number in the building. We cannot overfill the building. We've got to submit to what the government has said. But the good news is this. We're going to have people in the auditorium. We're going to have people in an overflow. But more than that, if you have underlying illnesses and you don't want to come into the building, you can come in your car, park in the car park, and we're going to have a screen outside. You can be part of the service. Hallelujah. We don't want any one of you missing out. So Good Friday is around the corner, 2nd of April. we back in the building. Hallelujah. Are you excited? How many of you are excited? Come on. Let me see that. Come on. Show me. How many of you are excited to be back in the building? If you are excited to get back into the building, then let's do this. Hashtag back 
to church. Come on, come on. Let me see you. Hashtag back to church. And let me see all of you that are excited. That's right, Leanne. That's awesome news. We are back in the building. Come on, hashtag back to church, back to church. Let me see how many of you are excited to be back and coming back on Good Friday. And then we're going to be back every Sunday and every Tuesday thereafter. Remember, every Sunday, it's going to be three services, 7, 9, and 11 a.m. Tuesday night, 7 p.m. That's right, Navan Naidu. That's right, Rani Ganesh, you are excited. Santra Naidu, welcome. And I'm excited to see that you all are also happy and ready to get back into the building. That's right, Emmeline, all the way from the other side of town. We are excited that you are excited too. And Narvin and Uncle Sunny Nandu, Michaela Rampasad, Nick Sneiman, back to church. Oh, there's so many of you that are just responding right now. Jane Gavinder, that's right. We are excited that we're going to be back in the building. Well, Pastor Victory, all the way from Joburg. I don't know whether you opened already. And also Pastor Kevin Chetty from the South Coast. And But we are excited. Well, Ruben, welcome. And also Gita Alexander, Gloria Naidu, and Sam Pule. They're all excited to be back in the building. Well... Jesse, ready? That's great. I see you got your dancing shoes on. Well, you can be rest assured. I'm going to have my dancing shoes on. Okay, Chantal and Cindy and Shirley Frank and Segi Governor. Well done. And I'm so excited. So many of you are going to be back in the building. I can tell you something. You ready? You want to listen to something tonight? When we come back. I feel that there's not going to be any other lockdown, but we're going to remain in the building for until this pandemic is finished. But whatever numbers the government allows, whatever, whatever percentage they allow us to have online or here in the building, I'm telling you, it's not going to be church as usual. It's not going to be your traditional church service. I can tell you that the Holy Spirit is already at work and there's going to be some crazy things that's going to happen. And I want you to come in expectant. I want you to come in in pre preparation. I want you to be in a posture for where you're going to receive from the Lord. For I know for those who are hungry can be filled. For those that are thirsty will be quenched. And I know even as I sense right now, the Holy Spirit is here. So, Good Friday is around the corner. Watch the social platforms. As soon as it becomes public, you start to register and you can be in the building. So, let us just go tonight and I want to just talk to you a little bit about prayer. Cordal Janica, welcome. Welcome, Vincent and Meshdi. Daniel's also from the South Coast. Uh, all of you that are joining online, it is so good to see you online. So, in a few days' time, we are back in the building. Now, on Sunday coming, this coming Sunday, the two, what's the date? The 21st of March, this coming Sunday, I'm going to be doing a teaching and I'm going to be sharing more so on the past year. This coming Sunday, we're going to be looking back and we're going to see all that has happened over this past year. And so I want you to just invite as many people to be with us online. We're going to just reflect on what God has done over this past year. I've got something that the Lord has laid upon my heart. And as we will minister on Sunday, I want you to get ready for that word. That word has already been impregnated into my spirit. And I'm already, I'm ready to already uh, pour that out right now. Even if I minister now, I know that word will come forth. But there's a timing for everything. So Sunday, 9 a.m. online, yeah, on this platform, Facebook Live and also on YouTube, we are going to be so get ready for that word as we reflect on the past 12 months. Now, this past Sunday, I was up in Peter Maritzburg at the memorial of my uncle and aunt, that's uh, Pastor Christian Joel Naidu that ministered here at our church last year, this time. Actually, I was telling my cousin Brendan that they had ministered here at the church the last Sunday 
And that same Sunday, the president made the announcement that we're going to be in lockdown. And we did not come back into the building. There and, uh, who, and can you believe, I just want you to picture this. So year, a year ago, I have Pastor Christian Jewel ministering in the church. We have them here, beautiful two services. They ministered at both. And a year later, we are doing a memorial service for them. How many of you also? You've been with relatives, you've been with friends, and then in a blink of an eye, they know more. God's taken them to heaven. And how has life turned around? And so I want you to understand, you know, we can go and we can get into a time of where we um, want to just get into the motion of what happens in church. Many times we want to just get back into what used to happen. But I can tell you something. This pandemic has changed the hearts of man and woman. This pandemic has created a fervency. And you've got to understand every one of you has a role to play in the kingdom of God. Don't ever think that you are an insignificant somebody in this bigger scheme of things. No, my dear friend, no. You have a role to play in the kingdom of God. Whether you are in a church behind a pulpit, whether you are a leader in a church, whether you're serving in a church, whether you own a business, whether you're working for a company, whether you're a housewife, whatever the case may be, even if you are retired and you're at home enjoying your senior years, you have a role to play in the kingdom of God. And I know that as we will spend more time now that we're going to get back into the building. And I sense there's going to be much time of worship, much time of prayer, much time of praising God and listening to the word. I know that Balparazam, there's going to be a breakthrough that's going to come forth for everyone that is expectant. Breakthrough is about to come in your way. Breakthrough is about to come your way. And so tonight, let us just get into the word. And I want to just get stuck into this because I believe right now that the Lord has speak, is speaking and we need to get ready for getting back into the building because as I said, you have a role to play. Now, I read this sometime uh, a couple of months ago and this is what it said, Nathan. The, uh, the, this, this one I read said, the day that we plant the seed is not the day we eat the fruit. And let me just get out of the chair because this chair is holding me back. I'm just so passionate about this word. You see, many times when we come to the Lord in prayer, we want to see the results now. We want to see the results our way and we want to see the results the way we prayed. But God in his infinite wisdom and power knows that it is his way and not, it, not our way. And that is why the Bible teaches us that God's ways are higher than our ways and so are his thoughts. And many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the plan of the Lord that ultimately prevails. And so when we plant a seed in prayer, you see when you pray, Jeffrey, your prayer is planting a seed. Don't ever think that you are praying and your prayer is insignificant in the spirit atmosphere you are praying and that is a seed that's planted and as you pray what does the bible says god makes it to grow and many times when we want to move god out the way and we step in and we want to do things manipulate and try to change things we move the hand of god out of that seed and we want to make it grow our way and we only mess it up what do we do? We mess it up. You've got to understand that when you pray and when you call upon God and when you speak certain things into the atmosphere, that is spiritual seed. And like the Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters and after many days, it's not going to return void, but it is going to accomplish everything that it was set out to do. And maybe there's someone there tonight that has been praying through this pandemic that has been praying and saying, God, uh, I need uh, this. I need a breakthrough. I need an open door. Let 
me tell you this tonight. Your time is coming. Your time is coming. The door is going to be open. And God is going to break open things that the enemy has shut. And one, those things that once were shut, God is going to open in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the day we plant the seed is not the day that we eat the fruit. A farmer does not go out and plant the seed, wake up the next morning with his bags to pick the fruit. No, he does not. Why? It's because there is a process that has to take place. There is a process that has to take place. A process of germination. Like a seed in the ground when it germinates and it produces and it starts to grow and it grows in stages. Just like that our life grows and just like that our seed in prayer starts to grow. And some of your seeds, some of your seeds right now are even coming to a level where the kernels are starting to show. The kernels are starting to show. Some of you maybe your prayers are at the stage where it is only the stalk. And you are looking at the stalk and you are saying but why so long? Well let me say this, the longer the wait, the greater the victory. The longer the wait, the greater the victory. Because God answers prayer in many ways. He says yes and he gives you what you want. And then he says no, but he gives you something better. And then there are times when he says wait. Many times uh, when you grow in God and you see as God starts to say wait... Only to those that have grown in him. The only people God makes wait are those that he knows he can trust. Because as you wait, the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So it takes a process for that seed to develop into an actual fruit. It is not an overnight journey. So don't ever think that you pray today and you want to see the answer immediately. That's not how it works. Now, James chapter 5 verse 13. Turn with me to your Bibles to the book of James chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 13. The Bible says, is anyone among you in trouble? Is there? Is there anyone among you in trouble? Then the Bible says, let them pray. The Bible doesn't say, if anybody's in trouble, go to the police station. Go to your friends. Go to your contact. Go and ask for help. The Bible says, let them pray. And so when you submit to the word of God and you pray, you are in line with the word. You understand? You see... The Bible teaches us that we must make our request known. And so when we make our request known, we don't do it because we want to do it. We do it because God says we must make our request known. And when we make our request known, how many of you know God is going to answer that request? Because everything is in His perfect will. And you've got to know that when you pray, you have to pray the word. You cannot pray emotion. You cannot pray somebody else's prayer. You got to pray the word. Now, when your prayer life becomes effective and fervent is when something is happening on the inside. You see, when change is effected on the inside of us, then our is not to impress people anymore but our prayer is coming from a fervency and from an effectual spirit and it will avail much according to what the word of God says hallelujah say amen tonight come on somebody say amen tonight the fervent effectual prayers of a righteous man avail it much you see, the Bible goes on to say, is anyone among you, oh, so let me back up there. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. So, if you are happy, then you should be singing songs of praise. You know what songs of praise does? Songs of praise confuses the devil. That's right. 
When you sing a song of praise, it confuses the air, the devil just like that. The devil has got nothing on you when you're worshipping God. A worshipper is a powerful person. A worshipper is a dangerous person. A worshipper is somebody that is so on the front line and cutting edge that the enemy puts his tail between his legs and he's gone and you can only say dust. So start to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the Bible goes on to say in verse 14, Is anyone among you sick? How many of you are sick? How many of you are sick? Then the Bible says, Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Let me say this to you. Can I tell you something tonight? Many times you have called people and maybe they haven't come. But I can tell you something. When you have faith, God will heal you right where you are. When you, and, and let me say this. Do not get into a place of doubting. Do not get into a place of unbelief. Do not get into a place of discouragement. Those are doors that the enemy is keeping wide open. Because he wants to catch you in there so that he knows he can grip you and he can throttle you and he can bring you to no effect. You understand? Just like you pray sometimes, you pray the schemes of the enemy, no effect. He wants to make us of no effect. The enemy is, we've got to be sharper. The only way we can be sharper is not because of our knowledge and because of the spirit of the living God on the inside of us. And I am coming to a point today. Because the way we pray should come from a character that's on the inside. A type of character that we possess which should determine that which we walk. In other words, our daily conduct must be determined by the character that you and I possess. And what character am I talking about? A Christ-like character character and the prayer offered in faith will make a sick person well the Lord will raise them up and guess what guess what if they have sinned oh my God you are so good they will be forgiven hallelujah aren't you excited about that word tonight if they have sinned the Lord says they will be forgiven Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Remember that your righteousness is because of the blood of Jesus. Not because of your good looks. Not because of your big bank account. Not because of all your gifts. And not because of all that you own. Your righteousness is because of the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus. You see when the enemy comes and he sees you. He doesn't fight for you. He fights for the blood of Jesus that's over you. And you must understand that as a spiritual being. You must understand that as a child of God. The enemy fears the blood of Jesus. There's nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ upon your lives. And we've got to understand, know that, and walk in that authority. And walk in that power. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you Lord. Elijah was a human being and even as we are. Elijah prayed that it would not rain. And guess what? It did not rain on the land for three and a half years. It did not rain. Can you imagine having such an effectual prayer where you pray something that it must not rain and it never rained for three and a half years? Man, oh man, oh man. Elijah is a man who had the fire on the inside of him. But he had also righteous seed on the inside. And there was something different about Elijah. But let's go on and see what the Bible says. And then again Elijah prayed. And the heavens gave rain. And the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth. And someone should bring that person back. Many times we have people that wander away from the truth. 
wander away from the faith. Our job is to go and help and bring them back. There are many people that are cold. There are many people that are lukewarm. Our job is not to judge them and talk them down. Let's go and bring them back by the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Now, if you have your pen and paper and you're taking notes, we've got just 10 minutes left, but I'm going to bring this thing home, but I want you to catch this before we end. Our prayer must come forth from a godly character and that godly character must produce godly conduct. Amen? Godly conduct. Now, these three points are going to help to shape you and mold you and get you onto what I call a spiritual journey, a spiritual goal that you want to achieve. You must have a spiritual goal that you want to achieve in your prayer life. Because you see, when your prayer becomes effective and fervent, and you start seeing the results like this, like this, like this, every day, man, you're going to be praying every single second of the day because God is trusting you. And God trusts you to call those things according to His Word. Not according to our will, but according to His will. That's His Word. Amen. So number one, we must have Christian character and Christian conduct. What must we have? Christian character and Christian conduct. Must have. That's number one. Number two, we must pray effectively. Now let me just explain that to you. Many times when you come into church and you see one or two aunties and uncles and people praying in the church, and you see them just going for it. You stand back, you look back and you say, Oh, woe is me. Sinner is me. Father, what's wrong with me that I can't pray like that? Let me say this to you. Don't look at that and be discouraged. But look at that and be excited that God is at work. But more than trying to mirror what they're doing, start to open your mouth and utter words of praise. You see here, one day at the family church, before we went into lockdown, I came up to minister right here. I was about to minister the word and the Holy Spirit apprehended me right there. Stopped me in my tracks. And the Holy Spirit says, but... My people don't know how to praise me. And that night I took my notes. I put it aside and I submitted to the Holy Spirit. And that evening went into a different teaching of trying to understand how to praise God. And guess what? There was, I can't remember how many, but if you come to our church in the boardroom, on the wall, I actually made a whole banner of that, of all the words that was birthed out of that night service of praise words. So whenever we pray in that boardroom on a Sunday morning and before a service, we are not short of words to praise the Lord. Amen. So maybe I'm giving you an idea in your home, in your prayer closet. Put words of praise all over, all over. And whatever words of praise, 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 you start to pray those words. And let me tell you, you'll have an open heaven in your home. Hallelujah. Even in your business. Do that and see what God is going to do. So number two, I say, come from praying as an intercessor. Intercessors have a gift. They have a gift and that is a subject for another day. But prayer is for every single person. Effective prayer, when you are righteous through the blood of Jesus, when you are praying from clean hands and a pure heart, your prayer is effective. I can shout and pray. Someone can pray softly on this side. God can hear the soft prayer and that prayer on that side won't be heard. Some people might even be pulling their hair and not even praying and thinking that they're going to get answers. It don't work that way. You don't need to pull your hair to get answers. God will answer your prayer even if you just whisper a prayer. Now, number three, we have to, Jeffrey, pray out of a clean heart. You see, 
praying out of a clean heart is like you standing on the forefront of battle. You know that the enemy has got one bullet, small bullet. You are standing on this end of the battle and you've got a hundred thousand bullets aimed at him. You just press one button and he's annihilated and he's broken and he's uh, obliterated from the face of the earth. That is what it means when you pray with clean hands and a pure heart. Because your prayer is that much more powerful and effective because you know deep, call it out to deep. And the Holy Spirit is attracted where there's clean, where there's a pure purity in our lives. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? Hallelujah. Now, in order to maintain a strong prayer life and to maintain a good Christian character so that our conduct can represent the Christian Christ-like character, we must understand that prayer actually governs our conduct and it also uh, makes our character. That's what prayer does. What does that mean? That means when I pray, I'm getting convicted myself. I cannot have sin and come before God and pray and pray and pray and think He's going to hear me when I've got known sin in my life. I've got to come and say, God, cleanse me of that sin. Help me to get rid of that sin. Get the victory over that sin through the help of the Holy Spirit. And victory is yours. Number two, conduct is what we do. And character is who we are. So your conduct is how you walk every day. But your character is really who you are. And you must know, the enemy knows. He knows that when your character is Christ-like, he is worried. That is why he's out to taint your character every day. He's out to tempt you every day and to take you off the track. That is his plan. So he can attack your character. And when your character is tainted, your prayer life is affected. And you cannot pray effectively anymore. Then he knows he's got you where he wants to. The enemy's schemes are cunning and devious. But thanks be to God, for God gives us the victory. Number three, conduct is the outward life and character is the unseen life that is hidden on the inside. Conduct is external and character is external. Sorry, conduct is external and character is internal. Okay, does that make sense? And lastly, character is the root of a tree and conduct is the fruit of that tree. So, you heard what I just said? Character is the root of the tree and conduct is the fruit of that tree. So all of us should be showing a lot of fruit in the area of godly conduct in our lives. Now, a few more points and then we're going to come to a close. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, It's interesting that the Bible says in Philippians 4, Paul says, Do not be anxious. Do you wonder why he, Paul said that? He says, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You see, Paul knew that when you are anxious, anxiety is going to lead to other demonic doors. Anxiousness is the first open door. You open that door, the devil is going to bring all his bruise, and they're going to come in ten times stronger, and they're going to mess you up. And that is why when you pray, you cannot be anxious. A praying person is not an anxious person. You've got to pray from a position of peace, from a position of faith, from a position of confidence, and a position of Jehovah Shalom. If there's anxiety in you, you cannot pray. So, in order to become effective in your prayer, and if you are anxious, the Bible says be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and petition, present your request before God and God will answer your prayer. Now, effective praying, praying that does not result in right thinking. Now we're going to come to a point and I want you to pay close attention. Prayer that does not result in right thinking and right living is a pretense. You know what a pretense is? You know that song? I can't remember who sang it. Oh yes, I'm the great pretender, pretending that I'm still around. 
I don't even know. Who? Freddy. Okay. Someone says Freddy. So, Uncle Freddy, whoever you are, you wrote that song, but we are not great pretenders. You see, effective praying has to change us on the inside. And it must result in something. The more we pray, the more we show God, we depend on Him. The more we pray, the Holy Spirit convicts us. And right thinking and right living is the fruit of a consistent and effectual prayer life. We have failed the whole concept of prayer if we don't effect change within ourselves. Let me say that again. My dear friends online, we... Fail the whole concept of prayer if we don't effect that change on the inside of ourselves. Not on the inside of your mother. Not on the inside of your husband. Not on the inside of your child. Not on the inside of your boss. On the inside of yourself. And when it has change in yourself, your prayer becomes effective. Why? Because you are becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting something tonight? Hallelujah. Number three, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man surely avails much. And why does it avail much? It's because it is effective. It is a fervent. But beyond the effectiveness and the effective and the fervency is the righteous blood of Jesus Christ. Covers us and the enemy don't see us. He sees the blood of Jesus and he hits for the hills, never to return. The character of the inner life is a condition of effective praying. The character of your inner man is the condition of your effective praying. You see, sometimes the answer to prayer is not that it changes life, but that it changes you. Did somebody get something tonight? Sometimes the answer to our prayer is not that it changes things around us, but that it changes you on the inside. And when God is waiting and holding on and not giving you the answer to prayer, then seek Him more and say, God, what is it on the inside that I need to change? Show me, Lord. You remember that song? Show me your ways that I may walk with you. That's, a, that's, from, this, that's from the Bible. We, God will show us his ways so that we can walk with him, so that we can talk with him. What praying. And when we do it the way God wants in his ways, we are becoming fervent and effectual. Draw me, draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Oh Lord, what a heavy word you gave us tonight. You see. Praying out of a clean heart, this is what we need to say. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within in me. The fruit of real praying, and listen to this, if you want to write something down tonight. The fruit of real praying is what? What do you think the fruit of real praying is? The fruit of real praying is right living. Number three, when we pray, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. My cousin always says that. I think that's his favorite scripture. He says, people must work out their salvation with fear and trembling. That's 100%. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Don't work out your friend's salvation. Work out your own salvation how with fear and with trembling we must watch therefore our temper our conversations and conduct we must walk circumspectly and we must walk in humility and now in conclusion let me say this the way we pray will come from a character that we possess which will eventually determine our godly character in life. You see, prayer does not change God, but prayer changes Him who prays. Let me repeat that as we conclude. Prayer does not change God. God is God. But prayer changes Him or her who prays. I've given you a whole new perspective tonight on prayer. 
Many times we want to just pray for many things and people. But how about tonight? Catching this revelation and praying so that prayer changes you. And when prayer changes you from the inside, you're going to become so powerful, so effective, the enemy is going to fear you. When you wake up in the morning, he's going to run because he knows trouble is heading his way. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Let's sing. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me, cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore the joy of thy salvation and renew thy spirit within me. One more time, creating me. Creating. Let this song be your prayer today. For as you ask God to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within you, I can. Life is starting to elevate. Your prayer life is starting to transcend to new heights and to new levels. And God is going to do some extraordinary things as you will speak the word, as you will pray the word, as you will call it according to His word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yere le be 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 ndori yara la bandoro lo boyate keri yere le be 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 ya kashate te ya kori yere le be 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 ndoro lo bondo ya ndori yara la ba 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 ya kashata shere le be 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 ndori yete katoro lo ba 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 ya kate oh Spirit Hallelujah Now I want to say this to somebody tonight For many years you have been wondering And you've been looking at people And you've been saying God when is it going to be my turn To pray in tongues God I want to pray in the Spirit I remember when I was a young kid growing up My mother used to always want to pray in the Spirit she was always desirous to pray in the Spirit. And she'll be surprised if she hears me saying this here tonight. And I used to listen to her request. I used to listen to her talk to the pastor. I want to pray in the Spirit. And as, and as she began to say that, guess what happens after a while? You see, as you hunger and you thirst for God, you see, praying in the Spirit is not something that is going to benefit you praying in the spirit is going to benefit others because God is going to enable you as you pray in the spirit you are starting to set and cleanse the atmosphere you see when pastors come and you see them blowing the shofar they're not blowing a vuvuzela they're blowing a shofar a shofar is blown 
as it cleanses the atmosphere and cleansing the atmosphere the enemy does not like those sounds and the enemy runs away and praying in the spirit is like blowing a shofar as you pray in the spirit you confuse the enemy and God is speaking through you and things are born in the spirit as you pray I'm saying to you tonight, if you are hungry for a baptism of fire, a baptism of the Holy Spirit, get ready for churches opening. Get ready for the building is opening. Get ready for the building is opening. You better register quick to come in. Don't let that hunger die out. Don't let that hunger die out. But let that hunger increase. And God is going to touch you with fire and if that is you tonight I want you to raise your hands everybody everybody raise your hands raise your hands raise your hands raise your hands tonight Father today you see every hand that is raised God I pray that you touch them with fire oh God they are bringing sacrifice uh, to the altar And let fire fall upon that altar, O Lord. And let it consume that sacrifice. And I pray, O God, that when we come back into the building, we are going to see, O God, in the spirit realm, uh, there's going to be hundreds and thousands of people that are going to become fervent, uh, effectual prayer warriors uh, for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God suffered violence. But the violent take it by force. I feel sorry for the enemy when the buildings are open for every church that is linked and walking in the ways of God and linked to the Spirit of God and in the flow of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be fire! And there's going to be a new anointing and a new authority that's going to come upon your life. And you're going to pray and you're going to walk. Your conduct is going to equal your character and is going to equal your prayer because it's going to be coming from clean hands and a pure heart. Close your eyes and let us pray tonight. Father, bless us, O God. Bless us, O Lord, and change us from the inside. Clean hands and a pure heart is what we want. Clean hands and a pure heart is what we want. And oh God, our prayer life, let it go to the level that will satisfy you. The level that will get your attention. The level, oh God, that will cause you to stop what you're doing and look in our direction. And oh God, let it come from clean hands and a pure heart. Coupled with great faith. No anxiousness. No anxiousness. Be anxious for nothing now. But just in everything, give thanks. Thank Him in advance for what is going to happen. And see the will of God unfold in your life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Whoa, hallelujah. Were you blessed tonight? I want you to say hashtag, I'm blessed. Come on. Hashtag, I'm blessed. Come on. Let the enemy know that you are blessed. Come on! If there's four of you in your home, send it four times. Come on now! Let the enemy know that you are blessed by your confession. So shall it be. I'm excited. I'm ready. Good Friday. We're back in the building. Join us Sunday morning. We're going to be talking about the last year in lockdown. What did you learn? What did God say? Are you ready? For the next move of the Holy Spirit. Stay online as they play out with the song. And God bless you. God keep you. God make His face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. In Jesus name. Amen. Ah uh-huh.
upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and a thousand generations and your children